I was looking through the Blender Help subreddit, maybe it was for tutorial ideas, who knows, and I found this kind of classical question that I don't feel like had a good answer, which is how do you take an object and spherize it, which is super simple in Blender, there's literally a command for it, but when you use the spherize command, there's a lot of like self-intersection and stuff like that, so the question is, how are you able to take a complicated mesh, spherize it, avoid intersection, and create these dumb animations. This tutorial is sponsored by Squarespace, which makes making websites actually easy. Here I have a Suzanne mesh, which is more complicated than something like a cylinder, because there are these concave areas, there's like areas with overhangs and all this. To sphere command, it lets you do this, but then look at all these like intersections, especially on the ear, the topology is gross. And here is a solution that I propose. So it also does the sphere, but now you can see the geometry is much cleaner and it can even handle these much more intense situations. Kind of a good analogy for this is here's the UV map for the monkey, which you can see kind of has a similar issue where some areas are tight. And in UV space, there is a relax tool that kind of lets you spread things out. That's kind of what we want. But in 3D space, one thing we need to do is for some reason, this very default primitive has no like connection with the eyeballs, which is going to be an issue. Somebody should correct that, or maybe it's a legacy thing. I'm going to select the eyes, hit F for um, making an end gun or for fill. How are we going to do this in geometry nodes? Well, the first question is, how do we just generally turn it into a sphere, kind of like the two sphere command? Well, for every single point, we reference the origin. So let's say we're looking at this point, we draw the vector to the point, and then we keep going until it hits the sphere. So this point is mapped here. If we're looking at this point on the ear, it is mapped to this part of the sphere, etc. Now, you might already see the problem with this, like this part of the ear right here would also map to the same point, which is exactly how we get intersection. So starting off with the basic command, I'm going to set position, meaning I'm going to change the position of the points. And that is literally going to be taking the position and running it through normalize. What that means is it keeps the direction, but always makes the magnitude equal to one, which is exactly what a sphere is, but it gives us the exact same results as the glitchy one. Well, if we're trying to relax, basically what we're trying to do is take very nearby vertices like these two and push them away from each other. This way, on average, the mesh becomes more kind of like scattered. For each vertex, there is something called index of nearest. And what this gives us is the index of the point that is closest to our reference point. So we're kind of finding pairs of points that are close to each other. We take this index, we evaluate it relative to its position. If we now have two points that are close to each other, this is very similar to how you do a, a physics simulation, by the way, and we're looking at this one particularly, what we want to do is is we want to push it away from its nearest neighbor. In other words, we want to go in this direction. So we need to know, first of all, which direction to push it in, and second of all, by how much. Well, for the direction to push it in, we are going to take a vector math subtract. We are going to take the original position and subtract the nearest neighbor. What that gives us is this vector pointing from the nearest one to the original. Think of these two points as having a distance in between them, right? And you can almost imagine that these have some kind of like radius that's overlapping. To push them away, I don't need to push by this like full distance, but in fact, only half of the distance because we expect some of these points to be pushing away from each other. I take this vector that leads from one to the other. I take its length, which by the way, is exactly the same as taking the distance between our position and nearest neighbor. I'm going to divide it by two. Again, this is an approximation for what we should do, but it will help. What we do is we take the direction and then we scale it by this uh, magnitude, which we connect to the offset. Now, what we expect is this mesh to kind of get a bit bigger, but also more distributed. So before, after. You can kind of see that points are starting to, on average, move away from each other. If we do this operation a lot of times through, let's say, a repeat zone, now we can bring up our iterations and run this over and over again. Now, what you might notice is that overall, this is going to start becoming very spiky. And this is because if a point goes way off, um, it's still going to look at its nearest neighbor and then still push away over and over and over again, which is fine. But if you look at the ear, which is kind of the problem area, this is becoming quite more distributed, which is what we want. So before it's very tight and after to kind of fix this deviation problem, we can first of all blur the coordinates blur, in other words, kind of average the current position, which is going to do it on every operation and gives us this uh, cursed thing. So before and after, and in this case, we don't want to run as many iterations, but you can see it also does some kind of smoothing, kind of the strength of it doesn't need to be too big. Another thing we can do to kind of prevent this situation from going on is remember our end goal is to spherize the, this looks so cursed uh, is to spherize this so if on every iteration we get it kind of close to spherizing that would be quite good i'm going to set position where again we know the position of its spherical 
coordinate in some sense is we take the position and we normalize it, which will exactly give us a sphere. But I don't want it to do it all the way. Otherwise, there's no point for what we did. So I'm going to mix the vector of the position. So in other words, originally we have our position and then we have our spherical coordinates. And let's say that we push it halfway every single time. We have our original Suzanne. It's then going to spread points away, blur them and kind of become somewhat spherical. And then on every iteration, it indeed gets close to a sphere. But this time, if we pick the right settings, the ear won't be as compressed. And this is a matter of picking good settings. I'm going to blur three times and just try to find the right number here. So at the very end, we run our spherize command um, that we bring through the repetition. And now we guarantee that whatever progress we made at the very end, we just say, make it a sphere. So to evaluate our progress here, let's just see what the transformation looks like. So I'm going to store a vector on the point. We're going to call it POS for piece of shit person of stature. No, uh, for position. So this isn't for the transformation. It's just to visualize it. So now I'm going to hook up a named attribute, which one our position. And now you can see our transformation again, spherizes it, but with a much more even geometry, right? Especially like at the nose and the mouth, you can see how nicely it does it. So look at how nice this is. Whereas the standard procedure, which is just to sphere, creates this like nasty, nasty geometry. So this is a much cleaner to sphere command. I plan to put this at B3D tools, which again is kind of the asset pack I'm making. And speaking of B3D tools, this is a website fully designed by Squarespace. Making this website without Squarespace, I, I just wouldn't do it because Squarespace has flexible templates that you can just kind of get a starting point and just update super easily, click and drag. In fact, every time I add a feature to this product, I can just add in, this is the new feature, drag everything everything down and updating is not a pain. Other things about Squarespace is it has a lot of SEO tools, which matters for getting people to your website, right? If they're not there, they can't click, there's no point. And if you happen to use your Squarespace website for actually having that as your marketplace, like people buy things from there, there are flexible payment options. So you can pay via credit card, via PayPal, via Apple Pay, and eligible countries. You can also do the pay later kind of thing. So you can go over to squarespace.com, design a website, and when you are ready to take that website live. You can use this link in the description. You